creating and sharing conversations. It's what we do on Arrow.net, A-R-R-O-E.net. All right, let's do it. Let's play it forward. These are real people, real stories, the struggle to play it forward. Episode number 419 is with Caesar Emmanuel from Black Ink Crew, New York. I'm great. How you doing? Absolutely fantastic. Hey, before we even get started, I want to thank you and everybody at Black Ink for what you guys have done when it came to sharing the stories of people who went home to find out about their families. And you guys created tattoos that honored that journey that's going to be passed forward. That says a lot about you, Caesar. Thank you. Thank you. you know, and it's something we just, we, we decided that, you know, we got to give back. We got to do our part. And to be on this platform and not take some type of responsibility, I feel that would be selfish. Well, you guys at Black, Black Inc. have always been so community driven because, you know, I, I could walk through the Noda district here in Charlotte and, and you know, you, you everybody assumes the tattoo artist and their lifestyle. No, you guys are real people. <laughs> yeah, with real, real problems. And just because, you know, we don't do the nine to five and we don't wear shirts and ties, that doesn't mean that we can't. Uh, we can't relate to everybody, and that's why we've been on so so long because we're so relatable. So so people can sit there and see themselves in us. Even my struggle. A lot of a lot of entrepreneurs out there, even before they became entrepreneurs, were scared, and they watched Black Ink, and they was like, Nah, I see his struggle, and I, I know I can do it. And that's the one main thing that I loved about this whole thing because everybody gets to see our journey each. Each, every single character on this show has their own journey, and we also have our journey as a collective. So when people see that, it's just like, it's a blessing. The, the importance of the reality of Black Ink Crew, it was, was talked about this morning when I was, when I was interviewing Danielle J. Litterman, and, and she's got a book out. It's called True Story, and she says that we need reality TV so that we can see ourselves and heal ourselves. And don't you think that Black Ink Crew is healing the community just because you guys put yourself out there? I mean, I feel like I never thought about it like that, but I feel like now we are. Like before, it was just us being on TV and just showing our crazy life, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And just when people like, yo, this is how we live. But for now, now it's more of killing our community because we went through so much in this pandemic the last couple of years with the social injustice, the, 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 the um, basically the lockdown from the COVID um, quarantine. It's just so much that mentally we're drained as a people. So it's time for us to sit there and have a good time, get back to us and get back to our community, get back to seeing people. Like, it's something that's needed. Mm-hmm. Are people getting back into that chair? Because, you know, you know, so many times people get ink and stuff like that for a family journey or, or basically they get it because they want to be cool. Or or there was there I've got tattoos on me that I, I got because I needed that release. I needed something that was going to give me something new to look at. I'll be honest with you, ever since the, like, the, like, everybody got to go back outside, a lot of people are getting more tattoos because now that they've been through this whole journey for the last couple of years, the whole world, now people are being more unique. They're more in tune with themselves. And you see a lot more people getting extravagant pieces of art mm-hmm. because now they they just want to change themselves. They want to be different. And I can understand you got to go with the times and, Right now, I have to say, besides us tattooing and helping the community, Black Ink is also striving to be better as a business. I love that about you because, I mean, you're showing the everyday person that it is a business and you can grow your business. Whatever your dream is, invest in it so that you can grow it forward as well. Right. It's always best to invest in your dream instead of somebody else's dream because only you can see your vision and only you can see it through. And that's what a lot of people ask me, where I see this black game thing going. I see it where it's at right now, but not in this full capacity. I always knew I would get my crew somewhere, but I never knew it would help so much that I could help other people and their crew and their family. So now it's becoming more of a, um, it became like almost like a culture. Mm-hmm. What is it like for you as a businessman, Caesar? Caesar, in in the way that um, you know, East Coast West Coast is 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 working inside Black Ink Crew, whereas you know, because I mean, you've got you know, the, the Compton show as well. I mean, there there was a time period where East and West did not get along with each other. I mean, isn't that a beautiful thing? Yes. Like we're showing different. Like East and West Coast didn't get along in the music in the music industry, 
I don't feel like it should be brought into this industry. I feel like that should be left. I feel like we're one. We're all on the same struggle. At the end of the day, East Coast, West Coast, South, North, we're still one people. We might have different accents. We might have different ways of doing things. But the main thing is to help our family provide mm-hmm. and make sure that people know our names through our artwork. And I feel like once you're down with Black Ink, you're going to get there. <laughs> you you spent some time down in Atlanta. I'm 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 here in the Carolinas, so I I know what Southerners are like. What, what was was there a culture shock when you went down to the to the Atlanta area with the clients? But it like this. Um, see, with New York, we used to things going so quickly. Yeah. Everything, <laughs> I, 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 you gotta get a million things done in one day. In Atlanta, you, we actually got to breathe. Yeah. Like it got to slow down, and we got to live life a little bit more, even with our tattoos. Like, we're doing a whole bunch of tattoos, but we're also having a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Plus, I love the way that in the South, it's, it's a different kind of language in the way that when someone says, well, bless your heart, they mean something else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I had to learn that the hard way. I said that to somebody. They're like, whoa. I'm like, what do you mean what that meant? Uh, okay. <laughs> so you had to, had to learn uh, certain slangs down there. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and the, and the thing is, is that, I mean, even the traffic, I mean, how do you go from a city in, in New York to, to Atlanta when you get down there on Spaghetti Junction? I mean, Caesar, did, did you get involved with any of that traffic? Um, Listen, I have been in that traffic, and it's not as bad as New York. Really? Like, you have to understand, New York traffic, you can get into traffic at 11 o'clock at night mm. coming home. And the FDR, oh, that is only three lanes. In Atlanta, you have five, six lanes. And worst case scenario, it gets to skeptic, I hit the HOV lane. And I'll be honest with you, sometimes it just be me in the car, but I ain't sitting in no traffic like that. <laughs> but it's not as bad as New York. <laughs> so now, when, when, you, when you have people come in and they're on the show, or even on an everyday basis, do you feel like that you are a part-time psychologist, or do you even study into that so that when they do come and sit down with you, you make that instant connection? Because we don't stop at one tattoo. We get more than one. Oh, yeah, like, any tattoo artist will tell you that they are a psychologist. Like, you take on an extra, a lot of extra baggage every day working, and I just feel like you, no matter if you want to hear it or you don't, you're going to, so you might as well just sit there, go for the ride, get the best advice you, you have, and you don't understand how much relation advice I done gave out, how much uh, people advice I done gave out, how much just life, advice that I gave out and it's to the point that I just feel like I could be Dr. Caesar and I think I'm going to go from a doctor to a you know what I mean but I've been doing this so many years and I've been talking to so many people especially those long time customers and long time clients that become friends and you know basically their whole life their kids their mama they pop because they be sitting there talking to you it's like you can't those are the bonds that I cherish because these are people that I wouldn't meet on a regular basis because you just don't run up and say hi and introduce yourself to every person, you feel me? So just that alone, I, I appreciate that and just have friends and different cultures and different um, atmosphere is a blessing. You know, you you bring up a very interesting point by, by, about calling yourself Dr. Caesar because, you know, the rules have got to change about what is essential and what is not an essential job. And I think that 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 a black ink crew is an essential job because of the psychology purposes. Go out there and try to get a psych, psychotherapist right now. You, you, you'd be on a waiting list for three months. <laughs> you put, yeah, yeah, I would. And I'm not going to tell you a lot. I feel like we essential during the pandemic and we did what we had to do towards everything we can do to help the essential workers during that pandemic. But like you say, tattoos are an essential part of life. It's like talking to a therapist for a cheaper price. Yeah. <laughs> well, don't you love big businesses that are accepting tattoos? I remember that there there were many times where I had I was forced to wear long sleeves and I, I had to hide my tattoos. Nowadays, they allow me to have them. I mean... To be truthful, like it's it's something that uh, they couldn't stop. It was something that was bound to happen because when when I first started tattooing, 
that's when there was lawyers, there were CEOs of Fortune 500 getting tattoos, but they was doing it and covering it with their suits. Now it's come to, uh, it came to such a thing that no longer taboo now. Like as long as you don't sit there and have like FTW on your forehead or something crazy, it's like everybody accepted it. And they accepting that everybody is unique in their own way and tattoos make them more unique and more of a piece of art. And, and basically skin has become the new canvas. Let's turn and as long as the world, the world is just it's, it's evolving. Let's let's turn the tables. What have you learned from somebody who's been sitting in that chair? Oh, I've learned a lot. <laughs> I'm, I'm, most important thing I've ever learned by somebody sitting in my chair is patience. Oh my God! Yes. Like there was, yeah, there's this, this man, and you know, it was it, it, he was telling me about this story. Uh, every time he rushed into something, it will always backfire on him. And every time he just see an opportunity and try, but he never really did his due diligence. He never did his research. He never was patient with it. And because of that, he was never successful. And that's some of the things that I started I started doing. And that's why I feel like I'm even so successful because people think that I just rush and open up tattoo shop after tattoo shop, but I've learned due diligence. I've learned being patient, looking at stuff, looking from the inside out, just calculating and recalculating. And having that type of patience when you know in your heart that it's just just go, 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 it's, it's something different. And I have to thank that man for that. You're such an inspiration, and and I'm just so glad that you guys do what you do on Black Ink Crew New York and and Black Ink Crew Compton. Every every Black Ink show, Chicago, you you guys are really in touch with the reality of who we are as a people. Yes, thank you, thank you so much, man. It's a blessing to be even even thought about like that, like to think about ten years from that where I was to where I'm at now. I got to say, I, I, I thank God every day. I'm with you on that. Please come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And you be brilliant today, okay? All right, you too.